Today, I am going to be ranking the top 10 traps in Fortnite Save the World. This is going to be my opinion, my list, my very educated opinion. And I want to say that I have already made a best traps video on the channel. If you've seen that video, you're going to get a lot of the same advice. And that video is a lot more general, speaking to every trap in the game. I have also made tier lists ranking the traps in the game. And I've even ranked it with the community. So we have done a lot of trap ranking in the game. The reason today's video is different is that I have decided to prop properly rank them. Not what's S tier, not what's F tier. What is the best trap in the game? What's the second best, third, fourth, fifth? There are a very few amount of tie breaks in this video. I really wanted to avoid that, but as you'll see as the video goes on, some traps are so functionally identical that they just had to be paired together. And of course, I had to make some hard decisions in the number one and two slots. So let's get into it with our number 10 position that is the healing pad and the campfire once again i said it right away we are going to have tie breaks and i don't love that but these traps function identically they keep you alive the cozy campfire heals you for a lot less and it decays over time so you kind of have to use it or lose it and it does affect your teammates which is great but it's also cheaper so in my opinion it's the best budget pick however the healing pad heals you for a lot more and it waits so it will not decay throughout the rest of the mission you have to actually use it in order for the trap to break so the healing pad is a bit better generally but the campfire is right there next to it and i wanted to mention both in the number nine slot is the wooden floor spikes this is a great trap to add because it's a great utility trap i have mine specced for damage because you might as well but there's really no reason to use this trap for damage it's terrible at it what it's best for is pricking the feet of the enemies and slowing them down that means that every single damage trap will have more time to attack it you will have more time to attack it smashers will rush slow Slower. generally every enemy moving slower is better and I want to give a bit of history for this because we used to use these with blue perks the reason for that was that duct tape was a lot cheaper and it seemed like epic saw that that was a bit silly and made an update long ago to make every single trap cheaper and I don't know if I was responsible for that happening I'm not taking any credit but at least all the traps are cheaper now and it makes no sense to use blue anymore legendary is kind of what you want to do the next trap on the list is actually surprising to me personally because I have not really use the wall dynamo more than like the last year and i've been playing this game for five years but the wall dynamo is great you can run it with energy or nature which means you have two different alternatives the zapple max by the way is a reskin so these are functionally identical they just look a little different this is just for people who bought that machine as mina starter pack forever ago it's just a cosmetic that you had to pay for so they're functionally identical but basically you put it on the wall and it attacks a nice wide arc in that one tile area and it just does good damage it's not a complicated trap you can do like a little half wall i guess if you wanted to be complicated have a wall dart shoot over it i know endurance players love to do that so there's some great synergy with some other traps but the wall dynamo just does good damage and it can be two different elements makes it a nice versatile trap that you can stick anywhere and it's a uh, it's really really good so i'm putting it in the number eight slot for that reason in the number seven slot is another utility trap the anti-air trap is terrible for damage even if you spec it for damage it is not going to be helping you at all it can shoot lava projectiles the pitcher projectile the throwing torches if you're in the Halloween season. I believe it can take out propane when they uh, throw it through the air. It's not as effective as it used to be, but it does still work. I do not believe it works on Death Bomb anymore. If it does in some future update, that's great, but I do believe that one aspect has been reduced. But it does, of course, also affect the enemies in the air thrown by flingers. The damage is negligible, unfortunately, but it does technically do that. What this trap is best for are lava projectiles. That's the key one. It protects your base, your ceiling. It, it helps your, your roof now break apart it's a trap you really want to use and for that reason it's in the number seven slot number six is another tie break people always ask me what's better the tar pit or the floor freeze trap and i tell them yes <laughs> so the floor freeze trap is excellent it is one of my favorite traps in the entire game it freezes enemies in place stops them in their tracks it's awesome and it's also directional so depending on where you place this trap enemies will stagger in a set direction if you are facing a certain direction this trap when placed will stagger them in the opposite direction so if you face your objective or wherever you want them to not be when they unthaw from the trap they will stagger going the opposite direction which is really really good that can perma stall fat enemies that will do really well versus basic husks and when they're 
they're frozen, they take 25% more damage. Not only will it stop them in their tracks and stagger them backwards, but they'll be taking extra damage from your surrounding traps. It's really amazing. However, Smashers can run right through that. Even after they freeze, they will unthaw, continuing to rush. And that is when they hit your tar pits. Tar pits are excellent for stopping enemies in their tracks. However, you can see I'm running quintuple durability on this, and it's only going up to 74 with my survivor squads. It will take the best trap durability of the survivor squads of whoever's in your party. So if somebody has max trap durability survivor squads, they'll help you out there, but it's still not going to be that much. And every single time an enemy hits it, that'll take up a durability. So this is only going to stop 74 enemies before it breaks. That is why when you see somebody placing tar pits all over the defense, they are being a little less efficient. I, I might go as far as to call them a noob, but some, you know, endgame players just like to be lazy. Guilty, guilty. This is a trap you want to put at the back of your trap tunnel. That is going to be uh, stopping the smashes in their tracks. That'll be stopping mini bosses. It is really, really good. Watching a rushing power level 250 smasher stop dead before it hits your walls is really, really great. And let's talk about the expense for a second. Two quarts, two mechanical parts, and seven rough ore is kind of a lot. Uh, not everybody has the exact same wealth in this game. Some of you might be scoffing at me. It's okay. We all wish we were as rich as you. But for an average player, this is not a trap you want to spam everywhere for the reasons mentioned, and cost is another factor on top of those reasons. So, tar pit and floor freeze are kind of tied in functionality. I hope you can see that. That's why they are in the number six slot. Definitely a trap you want to use all the time. The number five slot is going to expose my bias for damage. I like to kill the enemies in the game and make them less alive. Epic agrees with that. All stalling tactics and jailing tactics over time have been worked on by Epic. They have tried to reduce people from stalling out the game and, you know, not killing the targets. And that's why I feel like the tar pit and floor freeze are more useful than the gas trap. However, they can stun and freeze an enemy all day, but they're not going to kill them. Technically speaking, you can do damage with the tar pit trap, but it's not that much it's, it's almost negligible but the gas trap put that above your tar pit or your floor freeze and you'll kill them dead the gas trap is actually still relevant it's been nerfed twice in our history it has gotten a reduced damage update and they took away the affliction even if the description as of recording still says affliction it does not do that that said even with those nerfs it's still very strong and it also outputs continuous damage if you are playing in a game where you have healing death burst where the enemies are just healing each other after they die the gas trap will continue ticking damage every single second it'll be a lot more effective versus those targets and uh, that'll come up later in the video but the gas trap I think is firmly in the number five slot we have another tie break for the number four position and that is where I'm gonna be talking about the broadsides and the wall darts because these traps are kind of doing the same thing they both go on the wall and damage enemies from far away that does not apply as much to the broadsides all right everybody watching this listen up noobs in the chat broadsides need a wall to shoot against your limit is two tiles out if you are shooting three tiles tiles away or bouncing off a wall that's four tiles away, it will not be as effective. Ideally, you want two broadsides facing each other, bouncing back and forth because those cannonballs will hit their targets multiple times and that's where the true damage comes from. If you're just shooting this off into nothing, you are using it completely inappropriately and that is not how this trap is meant to be used and that's actually why it's in the number four position because the broadside does like S tier damage. It is competitive for the number one position in trap damage. However, if those walls get broken, which they very much will, smashers hate walls, they like destroying them, propanes exist, exploding death bombs exist, which means you basically can't even use floor or wall traps and exploding death bomb missions as it is and broadsides are just so nerfed by environmental factors like that that i just can't put in like the number one position but in the number four position it's firm because it is so much damage if used correctly if you don't have that surrounding wall and hey even if you trapped appropriately and the wall got removed if that wall is gone this trap is instantly like in the 11th spot on this list it just becomes useless however the wall darts will do less damage than the broadsides but it'll shoot three tiles out and it doesn't need that wall so you can put wall darts kind of wherever they fit wall darts are kind of like wall dynamos where you can just sort of fill in the gaps of your walls wherever you have an open space or if you have a long tunnel wall darts will just shoot through them and kill the things and do Great. It's locked to physical because its damage is so high, and it's just great. Wall darts are so versatile and good at killing enemies that, uh, yeah, number four position. I think both of these traps are amazing, but you gotta have to use them in the appropriate situation. The third position is another tie break between the wall launcher and the floor launcher. You can see which one I prefer based on my perks here, but these are more utility traps. The wall launcher and the floor launcher do zero damage to their targets, or at least they shouldn't do any damage. Wall launchers are great for pushing enemies off the side of the map, 
into death pits where it can kill them just by making them despawn or one of my favorite things to do is making them push back through tunnels i made a whole video on beast trap tunnels videos because i wanted to show people how i trap and that's mostly how i trap and one thing i showcase in that video are wall launchers pushing enemies back through a zigzag tunnel i love doing that and it's still effective to this day that is a really really good way to just double the output of your tunnels imagine an enemy walks through your tunnels they're slowed by floor spikes frozen by the floor freeze they're taking damage from the, the broadsides and the gas traps and the steel electric fields and the tar traps and they make it to the end of their tunnel only to get pushed back by the wall launcher that is a very satisfying feeling granted everything i just mentioned is going to kill most targets and smashers aren't going to get pushed nearly as much by the wall launcher although they will get pushed some it's still super useful and that is a, a great utility trap as for the floor launcher it's very similar except that we're pushing up instead of out i don't find that nearly as useful i know a lot of people like to put floor launchers into ramps pushing them away from your walls that totally works it's not super useful it's kind of delaying the inevitable i'd rather just kill the enemies ex like with a floor free or a tar pit, for example. However, Floor Launcher, I see the merit, and that's why I'm putting it up here in the number three position. I don't personally take advantage of it, but that doesn't mean that it's not a great trap. Now, the number two position is going to expose the number one position, and I really wanted to avoid a tie break, so we're going to be talking about the tire trap and the ceiling electric field. I'll say it now, I think the best trap in the game is a ceiling electric field. However, that is only a statement I'm going to make in this video. That is not something that's universally true, and I hate saying it because, as you've heard, the top 10 traps here have had very different use cases. The only similar trap to these two is the gas trap on this entire list. Wall traps perform differently, stalling is different, healing the player is a completely different situation than damaging the enemy. But I feel like damaging the enemy is when you get down to it is what you're trying to do. And tire traps and electric fields do that job best. We'll start with the tire trap because it's in the number two position. This trap is amazing. It's really good. It can be up to three tiles high and it will bounce based on how high it is, which figures with physics. So if you have those tire traps bouncing three tiles up, they will hit an enemy so many times that it's the most damage. The two tiles up is a bit of a compromise because most people can't reach three tiles up unless you're using a ninja or scaffolding and it's really annoying to place those. So in a practical mission, you want to place these two tiles up, but even two tiles up is still safe from propanes, it's still safe from exploding death bombs, and that's pretty much how you handle exploding death bomb missions in the end game: Ceiling drop traps and ceiling electric fields. So, the ceiling drop trap is not just great at damage, bouncing up and down and hurting them, but it'll stagger, the exact same way as the floor freeze. Basically, face the direction you want the enemies to not be going, and they will bounce towards your back. This is so effective that it can actually stagger enemies backwards up a hill. <laughs> it can defy gravity, the drop trap is that good, and you're doing good damage while you're at it. So you've got stalling and damage built into one trap while it's safely out of the way. It's locked to physical because it hits so hard. That is the way that Epic has decided to nerf it, but it's an amazing trap, all things considered. The ceiling electric field shares a lot of similarities. This trap can also be two tiles up and it affects a three by three tile area. And the one thing I want to mention is that it does technically have a three tile radius sort of where it can sort of reach that third tile down there. However, if you place a ceiling electric field three tiles up, you're only going to be hitting like the one tile below it and even barely only tall enemies will get hit by that so you need a cone it, it's not recommended uh you want to place this in electric field two tiles up that'll be the most effective that'll cover the widest area and it'll still be plenty safe you can run this energy and nature which gives you tons of coverage that's why i've supercharged two copies of these because in the water zones you're functionally doing 25 percent more in fact i've said this a lot before a 130 power level seal in electric field that's nature in a water zone it'll out damage a 144 energy copy versus water enemies so it's something to consider but beyond that it's doing good damage from a safe distance with multiple elements and it's got a super wide range a lot of the times when me and my friends are feeling lazy in a mission, you guys have seen this in my videos, we will just blanket the spawn area with ceiling electric fields. That's super wasteful, super inefficient. These are expensive traps to be spamming. However, it does pretty much get the job done. Ceiling electric fields are not the hardest hitting trap in the game. They are not the cheapest trap in the game. They don't stall in any way, but they are so flexible that I can honestly say that you can use these in every single mission. Like no matter what kind of trap tunnel you're doing, 
if you intend on killing the enemies, sailing electric fields have a place somewhere. And that just makes them my pick for the number one best trap in the game. But I really, really need to emphasize the fact that this trap cannot do it all. If you're trying to trap effectively and efficiently, you're probably going to be using at least half of the traps in this list in any tunnel you're building. If you want a whole series on the best trap tunnels in the game, I actually made a playlist showcasing a bunch of videos where I was trapping in regular missions, just sort of seeing the terrain, figuring it out as we go and talking through that process. So if you're interested in learning how to trap, check out that playlist link down below. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video, though. So if you guys enjoyed, uh, you know, subscribe, maybe I, I put a lot of work into this. Me and my editor definitely put a lot of gameplay. So I, I appreciate subscribing or watching another video. If you guys want to see more, I'll, I'll see you guys. See you guys in the next one. And, and goodbye. The video the video's over now. Cue, cue the outro. And then...